the people. And Article 11, Section 9 of the Constitution states, each person has the right to a clean and healthful environment as defined by laws relating to environmental quality, including control of pollution and conservation, protection and enhancement of natural resources. Any person may enforce this, enforce this right against any party, public or private, through appropriate legal proceedings. The spirit of Aloha is officially part of the Hawaii Revised Statutes. The language of Hawaii is part of our laws. It was not imposed on the people. And I want everybody to remember that. The people themselves voted on all of this. This was from the people, not someone saying, okay, this is the law you're going to have to follow. And I think that's critically important. Uh, and, and the people overwhelmingly supported everything that I just mentioned to you. Now, we were so blessed uh, at, when I was a, a child to grow up in Hawaii. As youngsters, now we're not even teenagers then, but as youngsters, my parents and relatives thought, thought nothing of allowing us to hike deep into the West Maui Mountains with our simple backpacks and some water. And uh, we'd always take a cane knife because sometimes in there they get pretty thick. Uh, we try not to cut anything, but you know, at, at, at times it's a little hard to navigate in there. And we'd carry, you know, we'd, we'd uh, explore that beautiful area of this island. We've always returned home safely. I'm not sure how we pulled that off, truthfully, because, uh, you know, it's, sometimes it's a little tricky. But, uh, you know, our parents trust us. That, that's the, where we, you know, this is the place we grew up. And uh, there is a very special spot in the Yonge Valley, in that area, that is a favorite of mine. On one side, there are powerful and majestic sheer cliffs with waterfalls dropping hundreds of feet. And on the other, deep valleys. Um, and, you know, before my daughter went away to college, I told her, you know what, we're going to go to that spot. I'm going to take a picture of you. Because, to me, that's a very special spot. And so I took both my children and we went there. And so, you know, I just think to myself, oh, that was my backyard. I thought, man, that is amazing. And as a family, we would routinely take walks in the evening and sometimes meet people from faraway places visiting this island. My parents, uh, as was the custom very often then, would occasionally just invite them to come over to the house and, and, and share some food with us. Uh, and their words painted a picture for me about, of the rest of the world. Now, at the airport, there were a few flights. My dad knew many of the employees who worked there. They would let us take the baggage carts and out on the concrete ramp and where we would play until one of the workers would say, okay, kids, you know, plane's about 10 minutes out, let's bring the carts back in. And so we would go ahead, you know, and they were nice enough to let us play with them. So we returned the carts to where they were. Of course, that's not going to be happening anytime soon today. But, you know, as kids, that was the Maui that I grew up in. And I remember out here in the street, if we ever spotted a taxi that we thought had tourists in it, we would, I, I, I mean, just with, with total sincerity, you know, in our shorts and bare feet, and that's the way it was when we grew up, we would, we would run along and we'd be going, aloha, aloha, and if they stopped, we got to ask, why, where are you from? What's it like there? And I, I remember riding the rocks in the Inayao River and having folks with their long trousers on and everything else jump in the river with us. We thought that was a little odd. But um, at any rate, we got a chance to ask them what, was, what the rest of the world was. How fortunate we were to grow up in, in such an environment. Uh, environmental court cases, um, you know, that they're very interesting. And uh, you know what, with the background that I just shared with you, you might think that a judge that would come to the bench uh, with that background would come on a mission. And, and, uh, I, and I believe judges are on a mission. But that mission is to preserve the rule of law. Uh, to decide each case based on the facts unique to that case and the law that applies to that case. If judges are to be effective, as environmental court judges or in any other area, we must remain loyal to and in our commitment to the law. Environmental court cases present extremely difficult issues. There are serious issues concerning the future of our land and resources as well as the immediate needs and future of our people. And that includes the need to feed and clothe your loved ones. And that, those are all very serious.
serious issues. Fortunately, we have a law to guide us. Justice Wilson, uh, and, and, and has, you know, today again, uh, said that uh, the establishment of my reports that I once said it was historic, and I totally believe that. However, the court is still in its infancy. And the issues that will be presented to our environmental courts in the future will be challenging. I can assure you of that. And, you know, one of the most successful persons I have ever encountered in my life, uh, and this had nothing to do with the law, uh, but I had a chance to work with this person on, on a project not related to my work. And um, I was amazed because this, this person could find a solution for everything. And, I, and as we were working on a project for several days in a row, I was thinking, how in the world does this person manage to pull this off? And um, I came to learn her secret. And that was, the secret to her success was to view every challenge uh, as an opportunity to find a new solution. And that is the challenge that is in front of all of us. In order to protect our environment and to protect the needs of our community, we need to find ways of creating success for all of us. And that is a